I'm moving on. I know we were talking about passion. Um, I guess it's a great time for me to transition to a team that lacks passion. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Josh. I know you're going through a tough time. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I just want to call it after. I've been through it last year. <laughs> I'm just saying I've been through oh, it last year. <laughs> I know what it's like. <laughs> oh, my God, man. I'm sure those of you listening, you know the team we're talking about, Manchester United, once again. Another disappointing result this um, this weekend, uh, losing four nil to uh, Brentford. Yeah, I was speechless. I was definitely speechless. Uh, was it within thirty five minutes? Four goals within thirty five minutes. I haven't seen that. I think ever since maybe. Okay, we've seen that. We saw that last season with um, Liverpool against Liverpool. So. Um, our Kansas City was too surprising, but for a team of Brentford's uh, quality, that was that was shocking to say the least. Uh, over if it's just going back to the season opener, um, I think that was a better game for us, just because I think uh, the first half against Brighton, I think Ten Hag made a mistake by putting Eriksen as a false nine. Obviously, I do get what he was trying to do to set that example for Cristiano Ronaldo by leaving him on the bench. But I was expecting to see more of um, a Rashford in the middle, even though I don't really like Rashford playing as a number nine. I would have liked to see him play in the middle, you know, Bruno on the left, uh, Sancho on the right, or vice versa, and then have, you know, Ericsson in the middle. Uh, you know, and, you know, this, ho this whole McTominay thing, I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. It's a new season. It's a new coach. We should not be seeing McTominay starting games. And obviously, we saw the same McFright pivot. I knew it was going to be a long day, right? Um, I don't know what Donnie has to do to get on this team because in the second half against Brighton, when Ronaldo came on, we had more of a focal point up front. You had the likes of Bruno and Ericsson drop to become playmakers. And once we had Donnie on the field, the ball started progressing forward. It was uh, the ball was quicker. We we're moving the ball a lot quicker, and we got a goal, right? So to see this week, this weekend that we started with basically the same team as last season, except for Ericsson and Martinez, like nothing changed, right? And then Donnie still couldn't come on. He brought in McTominay over Donnie to do what? You know, I was, I was really disappointed with Ten Hag this weekend. Um, not just for the fact that in 45, at like the, the substitutions that he made for the second half to me felt that he had given up. And I know it was 4-0 away from home. But at that point, to set an example, I would bring in the likes of Donnie. I would bring in the youth to set an example and just say, you know what? This is not right. I would bring in your... Um, who are the guys that we have now? Uh, Ganachos, your, um, your James Garner, those guys, just to say, you know what, kids, go out there and play because I'm sick and tired of making excuses for our first team players. I've been saying it for quite some time. Bruno Fernandez is not good. He's not a good player. Like since last season and this season, I don't know what is going on. I don't know if it's just fatigue of playing every game, but he's been hoofing those shots. Like every good opportunity he gets, he scuffs it. Rashford is shadow of himself. Like, I don't know what's going on with Rashford ever since his surgery. This kid can't play football anymore. He's non-existent. You know, the likes of Sancho, the same thing. Um, I agree with what Terry Henry said uh, a couple of weeks back. You know, why is Sancho so scared? to take on defenders. Why is he so scared? That's what we bought him for. 
That's what he did at Dortmund. He took on players. We didn't pay seven million pounds so that way he can just keep passing back. I'm just so frustrated. Sorry, Eve, that I'm just going on. No, off. no, man. You 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 gotta you, you gotta vent. You gotta vent. I I am just gonna ask you since you know No, yeah, please take team, on yeah, it's your team. Over. I'm gonna no no, I'm gonna I'm gonna be driving the questions for you. So I'm gonna ask you, would you have sold Rashford to Paris Saint Germain for 120 mil? I would have done that. Okay. Because I so think he would have who would you have bought? Who would you have bought as a replacement? Who would I have bought as a replacement? Oh god. I think there's a lot of people you could have bought as a replacement. I would have gotten the Ajax kid, the Anthony kid. Whatever happened to that Lynx? Yeah, yeah, I agree with, with you. I would have done it. Him. I would, I would have done it. I would have probably bought Anthony. I would have probably bought uh, definitely a defender. I would have bought something a little bit more. I would have, I would have uh, sold uh, Cristiano Ronaldo as much as he's a great guy and so forth, and he's a he's a legend. His attitude is shameful. I know he wants to win, but his attitude as a competitor is just shameful. I watched All or Nothing on Amazon Prime about Juventus, and there are some games where he's just shitting on the team, which is just uncalled for as a leader. And it's like, I know he's a great leader and all, and I'm definitely pro Messi, I'll say it out loud, but the guy is met and made. He's incredible shape, incredible athlete. He is really a fantastic player to watch, and it's such a shame to watch a player like that not lead in the right moment. If anything, he needs to understand he's 38 and time is rolling on. He needs to pick up Manchester United. He's, he needs to lead. And when I'm reading rumors that Manchester United might be canceling his contract because yeah. his attitude doesn't change, I'm just like, wow. You know, the last thing you want is to to that to happen to such a legendary player. Like, this, this is just a joke. I agree with you, Sancho. Is, I don't understand what's going on. Tag, I'll give you a stat. Uh, it's the worst start for Manchester United since 1921. That's how bad we've, it is. We've lost every record that we once held. I don't think there's any it's record still, now that we held that we still have the record, that we're still holding the record. I just don't I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think, no matter how many coaches you change, what needs to happen for Manchester United to get back to the likes of greats? I don't want to say, I don't want to repeat everybody saying we need director of football. We just need a better recruitment staff because I don't understand. I do get it. Like, yes, you want your coaches to have autonomy and you want your coaches to select the players and get the players that they want. But we have to have a quality recruitment system that understands the coach's style of play, understands the culture of the football club and where this football club needs to be and then bring players that could match the coach's style of play it doesn't always have to be what the coaches wants because this is what we're, we've been we've been suffering ever since moyes moyes came brought in his players like fellaini's the likes of fellaini's and um who else did he bring in uh i forget who else he brought in and then we had van gal that brought in the likes of memphis the pie um Mkhitaryan, all these guys Jose Mourinho came in, brought his basically pensioners onto the squad. And then now we have Ole, who brought in a team of just passion, intensity, you know, according to famous words of Ole, intensity, you know. And it's just like, this is what we're dealing with, whereby different coaches have come in and we have a mix and match of players from different eras and they just don't work so and then it's every play every coach that comes in there's always this one target that we have that we waste so much time on before um with um uh, what's his name uh ole it was the likes of koulibaly it was the likes of maguire maguire finally came into the scene uh who else were we linked to sancho two years to get sancho through the door finally get sancho has not impressed me. I like Sancho, but he has not impressed me. Now the same thing with De Jong. You know, um, he's Ten Hag's number I think, one target. I think we for can't... you, for your team, I think you also you're also going for British players because Manchester United need British players. So Sancho's British, Rashford is British. You need to keep a certain amount of British players to you know put that that whole British let's just say fan together. You can't just have a team of internationals and no British. So I think that's why they rejected 120 mil for 
Rashford. And I agree with you. You waste so much time with Frankie de Jong. He clearly didn't want to leave. He clearly wanted to stay and succeed. He just got engaged to his to his, uh, to his uh, girlfriend. So they're clearly thinking about long term. They have no no intention of changing city, regardless of whether it'll happen or not. You guys wasted an entire summer on a player that I don't even think will make a dent on your team because you need so much. So I yep. agree with you. A lot of a lot of a lot of waste of time. And I think Frankie de Young won't be the answer. As you you have Danny just sitting on the bench. Kitchen and Ronaldo benching him on the first game was beyond idiotic in my view. Regardless of what you wanted to show, it was beyond idiotic. You needed to win that first game. Uh, the second game, the fact that you lost two or three goals so quick worried me so much. I was like, this game is going to end up 5-6-0 at this rate because Brentford, as much as you know, they survived last season, they stayed in the Prem. They could have gone back down. They didn't. They stayed in the Prem and they had Eriksson clearly worked. You know, you guys signed Eriksson, and on top of that, now they have three or four Danish players. They just got Dom's out, a great young guy, which I think he would have probably fit with Manchester United as a backup. But you're not yeah. getting these starters. Like, that's that's what's shocking about Manchester United. And I'm sure Champions League plays a role, but I think that you could have gotten guys that would have been like, hey, you know, our goal is to go back to the top. We need you guys. We'll pay you a little bit more you know, to get to the top because the best you've ever gotten in the last five or last six years is fourth. That's just not good enough for Manchester United. It begs me to question that maybe the leadership of the entire club should be questioned, you know? Yeah. To be fair, we we came uh, third and second on the Ole, but it was, uh, obviously we can talk, we can debate if that was a false, um, false uh, representation of where the team was at because that was COVID. That was co- um, C nineteen years, and you know other teams were struggling as well. So, um, but at least at the end of the day, uh, the table doesn't lie. We finished third and second those years. But it's yeah. I honestly don't know what the solution is. You know, I look like you look at players like um, Ivan Tony that played um, yesterday. You know, Brentford came for war. These guys from the from the moment the whistle blew. They were just ready to attack, and they just capitalized on our weakness. We're too slow in build up. We're too slow in build up play. So it was very it's easy more than that. Like I told you, like like I said in the beginning, I think you no know, players are coming on for the World Cup. They want to go. So any player is out to get to be on that team. I mean, they want to make a difference, and I'm just surprised. You know, I heard the rumor this morning on, on ESPN that Tag made the players run 13.8 kilometers because that's what Brentford ran. And my question begs, why the heck didn't he do that before? Like, oh, why geez. didn't he make them run before? Like, why, why was why was running such, you know, it's, it's great to blame the players, but like, you're also the, the coach. Why didn't you prepare for that? If you knew they were going to run this much, maybe analyze the game a little bit more. So yeah, Tag has made some interesting choices, but I would have expected Tag to get Anthony because he was at Ajax as well. I would have expected him to come along with him. That that was, for me, a little bit shocking that he didn't get Anthony. You guys are focusing on Frankie de Jong. And meanwhile, you're missing some key players. I think you, you definitely need a striker. You need a winger. Yeah. You need, some, but this you need is why, someone in the midfield. Yeah, but this is why, like I said, it's very important to have a good recruitment, like a good recruitment yeah, yeah. team, right? Because so, while we always just link to one player, mm-hmm. we're never linked to multiple players why is it that the likes of Liverpool, whether you rate these players or not, can go and grab a Diego Jota, they can grab a um, a Diaz, a Nunes, they can grab all these guys that are not from, they didn't come from the greatest teams, you know? They yeah, came yeah, and I totally agree. But then scoring. my question to you, Josh, my question to you, Josh, now that Jeff is here, um, you know, if I compare Manchester United to Arsenal, now unfortunately I have to do it. You know, you have to compare these teams. One is rising, the other one is falling. What do you see Manchester United needs to do to at least get to the likes of Arsenal? What do they need to do? Yeah. What What does Manchester need to do to get at least to where Arsenal is going at least? Because Arsenal hasn't necessarily changed drastically their team in the last two years, I want to say. They've had this más o menos the same players. The coach has been there, regardless of his bad, uh, you know, his, his his bad attentions for the team at the time. Now it's paying off. You know, if I watched last season, Arsenal was just a mockery at the end of at the end of the season. But this year, at the beginning of the season, everybody's like, "Whoa, these Gunners have grown up," and yet Manchester United is is falling. So 
you know, Arsenal's doing well. Manchester United is basically yeah, people are saying I think, a shade of himself. I think I could maybe you could argue that Arsenal has a little bit more, you know, with the likes of Edu as your sports director and stuff. Um, Arteta coming from a Pep, you know, from getting developed by Pep and things like that. So you could say maybe you have a bit of um, some fo- uh, footballing guys and some key areas at Arsenal. But at the same time, Arsenal is also using the the young kids' tactics, right? You know, recruiting yep. very young. But I think for us with Menu, I think we just need to – we have the money. We still have sort of the pool, I would say. Um, I think the main thing is we have business people running the club, right? The football. So you think it's the institution? You think it's the institution? I think it's the institution, yeah. Okay. I think that's why I said we need footballing people in footballing areas for us to see a difference. Well, Jeff, since since you joined, I mean, you're you're an Arsenal fan, so tell us what you think about Arsenal and, and Manchester United. I think the biggest difference between Manchester United and Arsenal right now is that Arsenal brought in the young guns and developed them. Um, our, Man United. Don't you think playing. McTommy McTommy was kind of developed as well? Yeah, he's a shade of himself again. I know it's only it's early, but but, but remember, developed them right. Shadow himself. That's the yeah, big yeah, thing. Fair point. Big 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 thing is developing them, right? Um, you, you look at the likes of um, Saka. He he was given the opportunities and consistently, whether you won or lost. Um, whereas you have you matches United, where he kept on bringing the bringing in these old older guys who were, you know, established as starters in other leagues, albeit lower quality leagues. And then um, you have the other situation that um, Man United hasn't gotten through yet, uh, hasn't figured out yet, which is um, giving accepting where you are and knowing where you need to get to. I think Manchester United's problem isn't just the Glaziers. I don't think it's a business issue because Manchester United has spent has spent more than anybody in the in, in the EPL in the last um, um, you know five 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 years five to seven, ten years. United's wages are stupid. Um, United, you know, everybody keeps saying, you know, they, they need to have this, um, the, you know, um, need to play a certain way, you know, the matches United ethos and all this stuff. I think that is a problem where you're chasing a shadow of your former selves rather than accepting. You know, you don't, you don't hear Arsenal saying, oh, the, you know, the, the, um, the unbeatables. Oh, we haven't. We haven't. Um, what happened to those days? What happened to those days? What happened to those days? Arsenal accepted where we were. Try to win Europa. This is where we are. Try to do this. this is where we are. That's one thing I liked about Mourinho. Regardless of when he came, you know, um, you know, when he came in, he said, "You know, we're not in Champions League, but we're going to win the Euro, uh, the Europa." And they won it. And then they fired him. And the thing, the, the our, uh, United's problem is the fans. So let's be very honest. United's problem is the fans. Look at look at how Barcelona, what Barcelona has gone through, losing their icon, the greatest footballer ever to touch to touch a soccer ball. Yes, as a Manchester as a Man United, uh, Madrid fan, I said it. You know, but look at you guys now. First day of first day back, boom, stadium was full. Right, you lose. Fans are still saying, you know what? They're moving in the right direction. Manchester United. Oh, who are we going to blame? Who are we going to blame? And the biggest problem with Manchester United, the old guard from that first yeah. year that everybody wants to get back to for some reason is even though football has completely changed from what that era was and those people will probably will not be able to. Oh, oh yeah. Know the totally changed. Now. Totally changed. Right? Those players are talking so loud and they're being listened to and they're being given microphones. They're being given podiums to do this. Get them out. Stop talking. Look at you, Neville. Look what you did in Valencia. Garbage. Why are you still talking? What is what has Carragher done? Why Neville, is he still Neville's Neville's a joke? I'm not even gonna comment on that guy. You know, it's a joke, honestly. So, the guy's making comments on what he's done. He didn't even manage to coach himself. It's easy to judge, but he doesn't even coach correctly. I'll I'll go back to your point, Jeff. So I have right here the highest wages for the Prem. So Manchester City sits at three hundred and fifty-five million, right underneath. Chelsea at 343 million, 
and Manchester United sits third before before Liverpool, before Arsenal, before Tottenham at three twenty three million. Yet they're bottom of the league. Yeah, and and what did they do last year? And what did they do the year before? So uh, for for me, our, Manchester United's problem is people need to shut up and 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 let the let the manager do do their job. Except honestly, if you guys didn't you you think about it this way, you kept Ole to let Conte go to Tottenham for what? Because he understands Manchester United's ethos or what? Some some nonsense about that. And then what was yeah. the other? And then and then you know you've you bring in Ten Hag and now we're talking about firing him. Yeah, he had two very, very bad games, two you know symbolic games, but he didn't play them. I'm sure he's been he's been running, he's trying, he's been putting through you know what he wants the players to do, just like what Tuco did, just like what Pep does, just like what Klopp does. Are the players listening? Are, oh, is, what he yeah, said, are, are what he said the, Maybe if the what fans were behind the, the coaches, time. maybe if the fans are behind the coaches, maybe then the players will be like, you know what, we're going to stick to the coach. But when you have everybody fragmented from fans to front office to executives to players to managers to coaching to to sporting directors, the, the players ain't going to do anything. They're getting paid. You have to, I'm telling you, you keep forgetting. This is a business, Josh. You said, oh, it's too much of business. No, it's a business. Look, look, look at Madrid. We gave Bale 400,000 pounds a week for three years to sit on the bench and play for Wales. We're doing the same thing with Mariano, giving him fifty thousand euros per week more than he should he, he should he should have ever earned in his career. To do what? Be fourth behind fourth fourth forward to go on. It's a business. You I don't know that contract, you... that's what's going to happen. What you need to do, and Josh, you've been saying this: the fans need to ease up. They need to shut up, and they need to just accept where they are. You're not going to get to where Arsenal Arsenal got to where they got to. After a decade of garbage, and again, oh, it's just so games, shameful guys. games too. It's just shameful two games. games Arsenal went. <laughs> Relax. Look at the Tottenham Chelsea Chelsea game. Look at the Tottenham Chelsea game. Everybody's talking about how Tottenham is made. Tottenham is ready to 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 finally challenge for um for 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 uh, top two again. Look what they did today. Oh, Chelsea is 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 falling apart. This and this. Look what Chelsea did today, because the players believe in what the coach is doing. The fans believe in what the coach is doing, and they're behind that, and they understand it's a process. That is the difference between Arsenal, Chelsea, and the, all the other top top teams, and Manchester United. I've never, I've, I'm so surprised at how divided a, t- a club is amongst itself, amongst its ranks. That's what needs to be fixed. Not getting. I think, I think they that, wanted. I think they thought they were going to get tagged and everything was going to change. I, I don't think, I think maybe Manchester United lacked a little, a little bit of patience. Every coach, I expect a massive change. I think it was a big mistake to let go of Mourinho. Yeah, I think Mourinho massive. called it out massively by saying, these players suck. They need to be moved on. Like he, he is the only coach, I think, actually openly said, this is where we are. We just have to get along with it. I think Tag could do a good job. His end of, of the game chat saying I could I subbed three, but if I were up to me, I would have subbed them all. Just shows you how how pissed off he is with the team, and only after two days or two games. So yeah, there's a lot of change coming up, and you know I I hope something changes for oh, okay. Manchester United. Yeah, I think you know I think um, United was right in in firing Mourinho. I'll be honest with you. Really? Oh, um, wow. yeah. Why? Why? Because Fire Mourinho to bring in Ole, you think that was smart? No, 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 no. Like, that's what I'm saying. The mistake they made was, I think they were right to fire Mourinho. First of all, Mourinho had finished 17th with Chelsea. He got fired. And then we got a disgruntled Mourinho. Yes, he did what he did. And yes, he um, uncovered the problems at United. But he was also not, you know, the best character to have around. He also brought Where you guys United back to messed up was after Ole's transitional season well the caretaker season after Mourinho that's where United dropped the ball we should not have kept Ole we should not have made Ole um the official coach what did what did Mourinho do that makes you what did Mourinho do that you think he would deserve to be fired or what did Mourinho not do that you think he deserved to be fired yeah I'm interested in this one too because I I I sorry Josh I I, I think Mourinho is 
fantastic coach. Like I, I would love to understand what what, what you guys really detested. Okay, to be him. fair, maybe the Marino, to be fair with Mourinho, he did not from a footballing standpoint, the players that he wanted, I felt to me were past their prime, the players that he wanted to bring into the club. And yes, he finished second with us, which he said was till today he still says was a miracle. Yes, he finished second with us, but I think as a club like Manchester United we could have done with a better coach with a better um, playing style, better recruitment for the future as well. And then based on his last season with us, those like he's, it's kind of like what Ronaldo is doing right now where yes, you don't like the situation, but how you're kicking a fuss to me, that disrupts the entire project that disrupts. And I think that's when Mourinho lost it. If Mourinho's last season or the two seasons, his last two seasons, yes, he didn't get the players that he wanted. But if he did not kick out a storm like he did, then maybe we could have had a different argument that, you know, maybe if he got the players he wanted, we could have been in a better place. So that's you know, why I know, said was he, United was, he, was, was right he kicking a storm? Was he, was he kicking yes, a storm? Yes, he was. I, I, he, I, he, I, was. he was. He was. He was. But you know, the, you know the problem with what you just said, Josh? You know who else kicked up a storm? And then for the first time ever... This man, this uh, this owner was spending money, and and now and now they're looking like a top four or five team, guaranteed. Who? Antonio Conte. Sometimes you don't. The problem with fans, we don't see what's happening in the background when it comes to business. We never will. You may see what's happening in in the in the dressing rooms. You may we may hear rumors about what's happening on the pitch. Um, sorry, in the uh, training ground, we don't know the business. How do you know that Mourinho, and you know Mourinho? He expects a certain level of business time, just like Conte. Yeah, does. exactly. And so, exactly. and that's how I think that's why you guys didn't bring in Conte because you knew you, yeah. the front office knew that was going to be the situation. So for me, Mourinho did not do anything wrong. He needed to kick up a storm. The people he was trying to bring in, yeah, you may have thought they were washed up, but maybe he was. He's like, let's let's bring him in. Let's let's get him in for a couple more, a couple of years, and then we can move him on. Mourinho has never done bad transfers. He's done what is smart for what is in the immediate future. And when given the opportunity, he can build. That's the problem with Manchester United. You're not giving anybody any opportunity to build. And you have these massive contracts that you're trying to get, get rid of. Nobody wants your washed up washed up players. So to I, be I, fair, I, I think it's saying Ole was the biggest mistake, right? The disparaging Mourinho as hard as you guys are. I out of think, all your, out of all your coaches since, since Fergie um, retired, Mourinho has given you guys the most success, and you treated him like he was like he was a like he was a back backstage uh, helper. But yeah, could you totally equate agree. that to I, Arsenal I, firing? I, um, but you could kind of equate that to Arsenal letting go of um, Unai Emery. Oh come on, Unai Emery has, has not even an iota of Mourinho's like, success. But you now look back in hindsight and, and no, say, man, okay, but no. I think at the time when Mourinho, Josh, got how dare back, you compare Unai Emery to Mourinho? At that time. How? How are you comparing Unai Emery to Mourinho? In I'm terms not comparing of their careers. I'm not comparing the, their careers. I'm just saying in terms of what they had done initially. What did uh, Unai Emery like, ever do? If, if, if yeah, Unai Emery brought Edmund Edmund less success. Sorry, go ahead, guys. No, I'm just saying, no, no, Unai Emery, good. hasn't he done better than Arteta? No, so he hasn't. Far? No, he hasn't. He's done he just as been. well as Arteta. And in fact, the difference is Arteta has shown a style a style that the players are behind. Unai Emery didn't show a style, and the players weren't all behind it. You know what Arteta has been able to do that that Unai Emery wasn't able to do? Calm Shaka right down and make him actually a leader that he's capable of being. You know, Unai Una Emery wasn't able to to to. Una, Unai Emery didn't bring the success to Arsenal that Mourinho brought to Manchester United. That's why I'm saying it's not a fair comparison. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I still believe that. Mourinho at the time deserved to have gone just based on everything that was going on with the club at the that period in time. I'm still surprised. I'm no, still I surprised felt as a United fan at that time, I felt it was the right decision. Um, but I also do agree that maybe the decision of keeping Ole, well, making Ole the um, permanent coach and then keeping him for three seasons and then renewing his contract after what he did in the Europa League finals, to me, that's where I knew that the club, yeah, the club, it was bigger than just one player, one coach. Yeah, so this is why I agree that it is management. It is at the top, right? This is where the problems are. 
I don't think there's any coach or any player that's going to come into Manchester United tomorrow and fix these problems. You honestly still think it's the it's the front office? What what are they doing that you think is 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 translating onto the pitch? Like I keep saying, we do not have a recruitment system. We just whoever like, like who has man look at apart from, the, apart from the obvious names, who else has man you've been linked to? Like who else have we been linked to apart from the obvious names? Nobody wants to come to Manchester United because Manchester United is shambolic. You're no, not no, going to be linked to anybody. Yeah, the big no. That's what I'm saying. The big players don't want to come to United. Neither do the up and coming players because they don't want their careers to be stagnated. Look what you look okay. what you did to Lingard, Martial, Depay, De Maria. Should I keep going? These are people who were either at the primes, getting into the primes, or they were young. You have these young guys, McTominay. I'm not saying he's he's good, or he's or he's matches United's uh, first uh, first team quality. But you can't. Add but he could have been be better. Yeah, players. he definitely could have been better than he is right now. Under but, if if Fergie was around, he'd have been a very amazing John O'Shea. You know, somebody ah, who was just a good squad player. No, but McTominay is not the kind of player you need in this current in this current style of football. McTominay can't. You can't Fergie style of play. I guarantee you, if Fergie was coaching right now. He would not be recruiting the same type of players he recruited back then because that was soccer back then. Even Ancelotti yeah. has not is not recruiting the same type of players he was recruiting when he was in was in AC Milan or when he was in Chelsea or was he in Bayern. Because it's, it's, it's no, what I was, no, the, the point I was trying to make was well, McTominay wasn't bought right. He was um, an academy youth, so it makes sense that I felt that with the right coach, I'm not saying that he would pull up trees, but I think if McTominay was developed in the right way in the right system i think mctominy could have been a decent player that he would be as team. awful as he looks team, right now sorry but not for his team i mean not for his team okay yeah so so what we're trying to say what, what the question that eve asked which i'm starting which which we're both struggling with your answer is what is the front office doing or as you're saying not doing that is translating to the pitch of this terrible play. I, I don't see how the front office, other than managing their confidence, that com, uh, managing the expectations of fans, and and the confidence that they have of their of their coaching and supporting staff, that is the only um, uh, pull that they have. I think Manchester United's problem is much deeper. It's a problem. Of okay, a but, how do you, but, how do you, but how do you solve the, the problem without involving management? Management has to take blame. It's like if you own the business and your business is struggling, it doesn't matter how much money you've spent on that business as the owner. You've got to figure out what are you doing wrong. And what I've said I'm doing wrong is hiring the wrong people. For so long, we kept Ed Woodward, who was a, a banker making business I mean, football and decisions in the club. We have poor recruitment. And yes, maybe now in 2022, no developing young player wants to come to Manchester United. But I want to say that that was, that was true over two seasons ago. As much as, yes, we were not up to the ranks, we still made it to Europa finals. Like we, we still... Against Villarreal, I guess with no, no, Ole, no, no. yes. Oh, we, we, <laughs> well, we did it with Ole. It. Yeah, we did it with Ole, yes. Yeah. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is, while we were still hot, we could have made changes that, but we did not make those changes because we got well, not me, because I have been calling this out for a long time. Everyone got lost in the sauce in the Ole yeah. Ole on the wheel. Everyone got distracted by that. So this is what I'm saying is. We've made bad decisions because we haven't had the right people at the right place, like in the right positions to make good football and decisions. And it goes back to recruitment again. And this is what I'm saying is we've been recruiting pensioners from the likes of Igalo, Cavani, Ibrahimovic, uh, Wesley, uh, what's his name again? Um, the Dutch, I mean, the German guy. Um, Schneider? Schweitzinger. Yeah, Schweitzinger. All these guys. We've just been getting... People that are but just you, but, but you know, you know, Dutch coaches love themselves, right? So bringing in Ten Hag, I don't know what you expect is going to happen. Um, yeah, the transfer window is still open, man. Last last point on Manchester United. 
the transfer window is still open, man. What 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 changes are you hoping to see? Because you have a you have a manager who has a system who has a playing style. Edward Word is gone. What's what's what now? What now? What now? Well, like, Clearly, you mean like for the- whatever is there is, is not is not sufficient. Wait, sorry. Repeat that. What do you need to see happen now while while the transfer window is still open for you to feel like we're going to be top? You guys would be top four. Um, I would say we need a striker. We need, um, like Rabio coming in. I think oh, people are over exaggerating the whole Rabio thing about how, you know, he's washed up and blah blah blah. Oh yeah, Rabio's think- done. Rabio, I can't believe you think Rabio is going to come and do something. He's, no, I don't think he's going to come and do something, but he's going to do better than what we're currently doing right now. I think, in my who own, do you think opinion. who do you think Rabio is better than on your on your current midfield between Mark McTominay, Fred Erickson, and Van de Beek? Who do you think Rabio is better than? Okay, based on um, I haven't seen him playing recent since the Euros, so I'm not gonna. Oh, so you haven't been watching him in Syria? You haven't watching him. You haven't been watching him blaze through Syria. No, I haven't watched him. No, I haven't watched him. In- yeah, don't worry. Neither have we, because he ain't he ain't done he ain't done jack at Juventus. Yeah, buddy. he hasn't done anything. But just from what I've seen him play, from my memory of Rabio, what I can say is his touch is much better than the McTominay's. His advancement play is much better than I would say probably a Fred. Um, he has better ball control than uh, what's it called um, than a Bruno. So I think he provides a little bit of stability. Yeah, I can't nitpick every part of his game, but I just can't stand watching the McTominay anymore. At least I don't think Rabio is going to be hiding, only having four touches per game. I think when Rabio gets the ball, he's going to be looking to move the ball forward. That's all I'm asking. So you, you know what I think? I, you're I, I'll step in. I'll, I'll, I'll step in. Yeah. Uh, I'll say... I'll say I agree with I agree with, with Josh Atini a bit on the front office because usually it goes down the front office. But I'll say the biggest problem at Manchester United is you live in the past. I mean, everyone's saying it. You guys live in the past, and it's, you just have to accept it forward. And that's Josh's point, uh, Jeff's point. Um, what I'll say, what I'll say in terms of recruitment, I I don't know any striker that doesn't want to play Champions League before a World Cup. That's that's the problem that you guys are facing. It's a short window now. You have two weeks. You wasted ninety percent of your transfer window on Frankie De Jong, which I think is not an answer to any of your solutions. Um, I think the midfield you have, you just have to accept what you have. I think you should have gone for a winger because Sancho needs competition. Should have gone for Anthony. I think striker. You should have gone for probably another older striker to give Cristiano Ronaldo a bit of competition and Rashford a little bit of fear. I think if someone offered me 120 mil for Rashford, in this case, for probably such amount, I think I would have accepted it and tried to move the money around. But again, to your point, uh, Josh, the front office has to be accountable. If you guys don't make a, a buy by August 31st, when the transfer window shuts down, then I would seriously call for the front office. But until then, I think what Jeff's point is, it still goes back to the manager. He wants Frankie de Jong. Like Tag has been pushing for Frankie de Jong. Even though he came from Ajax, he could have pushed for Anthony. He has not. He's been pushing for Frankie de Jong like he's some miracle player. And I've been telling you, I've been watching Frankie de Jong, and the only time he performs is when he's on the verge of being kicked out of the club. So, I, and this like is my I said, I this kind of goes back much to what I was saying. Just one thing. Rabio was a good player. I'll agree with you on, on that, Josh. He probably was better than McTonomy back then, better than Fred, no problem. But to Jeff's point, I've been watching this guy playing at Juventus, and there's a reason they want to get rid of him. He's just not at that level. And Serie A is a lower level than the Prem. And he's Prem temperamental. More intense. He's, he's very yeah, temperamental. Just, to come to the just, EPL, it's be yeah, United. Yeah, okay. EPL to be clear, retire. like I'm not happy with the Rabio signing. But for me at this point, we are desperate for bodies. We're desperate for bodies. All it takes They're is a really knock from Ericsson, and their midfield is going to collapse. Nah, like, you need you need Ericsson some players. Gets you need to accept. 
Sorry? You need to accept that you need to accept that maybe you need to get some players with experience that don't necessarily need to play Champions League. Like maybe you need to go and get a couple of guys from Bundes that will probably hold them. Okay, so it, so it goes players. back to my point of recruitment. Just like how yeah, yeah, we're, That's we have a, we have a Dutch coach and all of a sudden we're linked to the entire Dutch national team. Like what the hell? That's not recruitment. That's the manager, man. But as I'm saying, yeah, if I you mean, had a good recruitment say, system, then that, all these problems would not be. This is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I'll say that, Josh. The whole Dutch thing is Coleman. I went through that last yep. year or the year before that. Van the entire Howe. Coleman. Yeah, oh my God. Like, he wanted the entire, like, he got Dipe. He got, uh, what's it called, De Young. I mean, he got so many players, I can't even remember all their names. You got, all you got, you got, you got De Young, too. <laughs> yeah, on top of that, De Young. I was like, we got two De Youngs on the team. Never seen this since, you know, since whatever. But I'm just, it, unreal, unreal. Like, I totally agree with you, but what he should have done and what Manchester should have done is stop trusting the damn coaches all the time for the recruitment because it's clearly not working six years in a row. So they should have got talented call. Like, you should have got Pellingham from Dortmund, a British player that plays midfield. It's going to cost a lot of money. You should have got that guy. You just splash your money on that. Why are you holding off so exactly. much? You go and spend money on Henderson, and now you got rid of him. Like, what this, this thing, this, this, it's, you guys are confused. And the problem, again, I'm telling you, Josh, if the play, if the fans for one full season stood behind the players, win or lose, like all the mid table and bottom table teams do, I guarantee you, you'll see change. And then you'll see players wanting to come there. And then you'll see a coach system being able to be put into practice. The problem in Manchester United is a fraction front office and transfer policies, but is majority the fans. Because because you know how everybody's saying, oh, Madrid fans are fickle, Madrid fans are this and that. We're not. We're not. And that's, that's, that's the thing, right? So take it just as a fan, take a step back and stop blaming the errors of the past and, and start blaming the errors of today. And the error, the only error that is consistent and has been changed, that has been consistent throughout all ever since Fergie left is what? The fans' demeanor. You've had multiple coaches. You have a new. You have a new front office. What? What? The owners ain't. You, Glazers are not the problem. Like yeah, that. That. That thinking needs to go away. You guys are down two nil. Signs of Glazer out came up again. Nonsense. Come on, utter nonsense. Let's be very real. So I will that's say before, because I before, think before. I, I think I'm getting it under Josh's skin. Um, but no, 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 no. no. You, you guys know. You guys are. Chat. But you guys Good have chat. listened to Good me chat. for the last how many years? I've been saying all these points that you guys have been saying. Like, I've talked about how our fans villainize players. You know, we've talked about that, the favoritism that goes on. We've talked about it all. So this is me. I'm just saying that I'm just exhausted. But I'm, am I surprised about what's going on? Like, even yesterday morning, what was different about that, um, that lineup than from last season? Apart from Ericsson and Martinez, like I already said, nothing had changed. So was I expecting a different result? No, I wasn't. And yes, I think there is a lot to blame, but I do agree with you. Like, I think you guys are basically saying my points from maybe two seasons ago or a season ago, yep, right? So that's exactly. So that's what I'm saying is for me, yeah, I'm just we're hearing you. We're hearing you. We're hearing you. I wouldn't contest what you're saying. What what two comments you made that surprised me. One, the Mourinho, and the second is the Glazers. I don't think it's a front office. I think it's the lack of chain. I think there's something going on between the, the, the coach and the players. Either there's an imbalance in terms of power and everything goes back to Fergie up at the top saying, hey, you know, like Tommy is the best. He needs to play. I, either you give that power to that coach and he has full power. But I do agree with you, you know, Josh, on this point that the front office needs to be held accountable for recruitment. I mean, there's so many players you could have gone for in the entire season, entire summer uh, window transfer than going for Frankie the Young. That's the only player you've been linked to that doesn't even want to come along. And he said it like five times. So that just doesn't make sense to me. The second thing is if – tag was really the guy that was pushing for something we were to hurt we would have heard at least much more players coming from ajax and that wasn't the case that's that should literally surprised me so i will say unfortunately for you josh i think you're playing one of the toughest games this coming week so i don't <laughs> think you guys will make don't think you guys will get past this game i actually think it's going to be a blowout but i could be wrong i don't know like I i'm know hoping for topic, uh, i'm hoping for like what happened to arsenal last season to happen to us 
Arsenal lost three of their first uh, oh, um, season openers. Even though, to be fair, um, Arsenal had stronger opponents in the likes of Brent. Well, Liverpool, uh, well Brentford Liverpool was tied. Brentford's first season, so. Liverpool tied to a tough four, much tougher than I expected. Mitrovic was really good. Another striker you should have probably gone for, at least a holding pattern. But really, I, I think that Liverpool, unless mistake, I think unless you get Cristiano Ronaldo to wake up and be a something of himself besides whining all the time, I don't think that uh, you guys are winning this game. I don't know what you think, Jeff. All right, Jeff's busy. No, no. I just think that um, you lost out on Sterling for some reason. You lost out on Jesus for some reason. Lost out well, on Sterling Zichenko would never have come to reason. United after Hold playing on. for City. Hold on. Fine. Sterling, but Jesus, there's no Champions League football in Arsenal. Zichenko, there's no Champions League football in Arsenal. What's the reason? You need a left back. I don't know why you still believe I don't know why we're still believing in Shaw. You need a striker, a young one. What happened? You you, you would have been able to be like we would have been able to get rid of Ronaldo. But the reason why you're not able to get rid of Ronaldo is because you need a striker. You see, Rashford can't do anything. That's what I think. I think you missed that. That's, yeah, that's, that's why we declined it. That's why we declined it because we can't Rashford. lose both Ronaldo and Rashford, right? Yeah, but 120 mil, man. It's, uh, it's I would have taken it. I don't it, think it, I would have said no to it. Yeah, I, would, I don't think I would have said no to that. I know. 120 mil. What? what? I don't know. Yeah, I Before don't know what Euros, I, was thinking, I would have but... taken that deal. Before well, the also, yeah, I think the the single biggest I mean, headache that is, you know, no, sorry, go ahead, get, sorry. One thing that United, my last point, and then we can move on to Barca Madrid. My thing is this: Manchester United, your single biggest problem is an inability to accept you messed up and just say, "Fine." You can just sit on the bench then. Maguire. He should not be captain. That should be De Gea. He should also not be starting. It doesn't matter what he does for England. That is irrelevant. Just like how we just like how Mariano, you're not performing, bench. Bill, you're not performing, you have attitude, bench. You can't do that with Maguire. Why? Why is this guy given so much pull? Why is he the first name on the team? So it goes back to management then. Oh, no. Who is saying the front office of management? Somebody up there is saying that the likes of McTominay, Maguire, these guys have to play. Mm -mm. That's that's the only thing I can see from the coaching man. It's coaching man. Zidane, it it was Bale. It was uh, um, Prezi who won, who re signed Bale in that stupid contract and was forcing Bale down Zidane's throat. Zidane said no. In front of everybody, I hope, I hope it gets resolved soon because the best, sooner the better is for everybody. The problem is the coach. And the problem that the reason why the coach doesn't have that kind of strength to say that is because the fans aren't behind them. There's your problem. Nobody is behind your coaches. Nobody's behind your players. So who's going to end up making the decisions? Upper management. Don't blame upper management. Blame the fans. That's the problem. In my humble opinion. Strong because words from Jeff. Jeff. Strong words from Jeff. I don't know, man. Blaming the fans, I do I, I do agree with the fans, but it's like saying my business is struggling, but I'm going to blame it on my clientele. Because the fans are the clients, aren't they? Mm, the it's, a little the bit, it's a little bit different, right? Because the clientele are going um, – the clientele for fans, they're going, they're going to be clientele forever. Right. That's OK. That's, that's OK. Different. So let me use it. It's like the banks, for example. Right. It's like the banks, for example. So the banks have customers. And let's say, you know, the bank, there's a branch that's located in. But the, I can leave whenever, you know, Josh. The, the, I don't, I don't the, have an emotional attachment to any other business venture that like I do with sports. It's not the same, man. You cannot do that same equivalence of business. It's very different as a clientele, even though I am a customer. And I am and I'm a Rogers customer, for example, I can go to Bell and tell us whenever Bell uh, Rogers ain't giving me what I'm looking for because I'm not emotionally attached to the red of Rogers and all this other stuff. No, there. That's the problem. 
I don't need to be behind Rogers and Bell and 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 TD and whatever as a client, as a fan. It's very different, man. I don't think there are those 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 are not equivalencies that you can that you no, can. No, but make. but okay, depends. Okay, I know it's not equivalent, but what what we're talking about here is when your business is failing or is falling apart. Like I think Manchester United is falling apart right now. Your business, Manchester United it. business is not falling apart. You guys no, are still not making the business part, but money. Well, if you're not winning games and you're not making Europe, but you're still making point, money. That's that the funny revenue point. is going to stop at some point. Is it? Look at Arsenal. I don't care what club. I don't care what club you are. At some nah. point, like, yeah, you're not still going to have money from the past. Yes, not you're going to have money from what you've accrued, but you're not going to be making the same kind of money as the likes of City and Liverpool. Not in the EPL, my friend. Eve's just read off your wages, man. Not in the EPL, Barcelona. Even under, uh, you know, just just a quick, just just doing that nice segue. Barcelona, with all their struggles, they knew if we are not performing, we are going to lose money because we've lost the reason for all of our pull, Messi. You guys have lost Fergie, the reason for all your quote unquote pull, but your fans are still there. EPL is still strong. You still have the have the have the highest broadcasting revenue ever um, in 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 the in the world of soccer leagues. So, man, you your problem is not money. Your problem is not your business is failing. The problem is your model isn't bringing the outcomes that you are expecting in the time frame that you put them in. So, you either need to adjust your your expectations or you adjust your timeline. That is the business equivalent of what you're trying to get to, Josh. Manchester well, United yeah. is Jeff, not you're a to tell me, Jeff, you're trying to tell me that if this persists for the next another 10 years, that, yes, we might still have a bit of pool just because the people who have been supporting United since United has been successful are probably still alive. But you're trying to tell me that you, if you, like, you have kids, that your kids are going to look at Manchester United and it's going to say – Dad, I want to support this club because they're doing fantastic things. They don't have, no, a, they're they're, not. So over they don't time, have a choice, man. We're going to okay. lose that pool. That's okay, what I'll, to I'll, say. I'll answer your question with two words. Maple Leafs. 1960s. Still the wealthiest hockey club in the world. Haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1960s. So again, a fan, a fan is a client that can never leave. And that is why they're emotionally bound to it. So, yes, of course, if you continue for the next 10 years, it's not going to happen. But maybe you can have a five-year plan. Maybe you can say, you know what, 10 Hag, we're giving you three solid years. And on your third year, we're going to say, you know what, you need to get this done. We're going to help you rebuild in three years. That's what they did with our. That's what Arsenal did with Arteta. So, you know what, man? I, I'm Wait, not going to be able to convince thing. Which you is the of, same of, thing, though. Of, which is the same thing. Like, how is that any different from management making those targets and saying, "You have we're going to invest with you for three years"? How is that any different? You're still involved in management. But management is listening to the emotions of the fans because they're scared they're gonna they're gonna lose all that money. And my point is, management needs to just adjust, and the fans need to adjust their expectations. Or so, the, so, so is management adjusts the timeline, the fans adjust their expectations, the and everything will be solved. Sorry, I, I don't want to be the referee. It boils down to the case, same thing but... of management. Like either way, whether management is listening to the fans or not, it's still at the end of the day. It's like if you're CEO of a company and you're failing, but you're saying you're listening to because you're listening to the staff and you're failing. At some point, as a CEO, you've got to figure out. Okay, I need a team that knows what they're doing because we can't just keep listening to our employees all the time. And we're not getting the results that we need. So it's the same thing. At the end of the day, it still boils down to management making crucial decisions. I agree with you, Josh. I agree. Management needs to adjust their timeline. Fans need to adjust their expectations. And I think yeah. we agree on that. Yeah. Right? And like, like you said, right, we can't just put all the blame on one party. That's why it's deeper than just management. It's deeper than just coaches. It's deeper than just players. And it's deeper than just fans, Right. Yep. But at the end of the day, for anything to change in a company, you've got to look at the man at the top. That's just the reality of life, right? And 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 the people be and the people below him as well. Exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess this is a great way to I guess move on to La Liga because we're talking about uh what 
one team is doing to stay relevant and to avoid the um, the mishaps that Manchester United is the unfortunate uh, circumstances that Manchester United finds themselves in. So, yeah, I guess um, Eve. Last time you were not here, so um, obviously there's been a lot of talk of Barcelona in the transfer market. Um, they've been finally able to register their players. So, uh, tell me how you're feeling about the season and if this all the risk that Barcelona took um, is worth it. 